Hi, I'm Jay Richards with the Discovery Institute. We are here at the COSM 2022 conference in Bellevue, Washington. We had a, a terrific discussion actually today about a new book by Gail Pooley um, and Marion Tupi called Superabundance, which uh, continues the great work um, of the, the late, great Julian Simon, the economist. But what's funny about superabundance is that Peter Thiel had spoken earlier uh, and made reference to it and made an aside when he was asked by George Gilder about superabundance. He said, well, he pretty much disagreed with all of it. So we thought, well, that's very interesting. And so we thought, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna hear from the authors the very next day. We did that. And I am joined by my friend and colleague, Gail Pooley, who is a professor at BYU Hawaii, and he's also a fellow here at the Discovery Institute. Gail, good to see you. Good to see you, Jay. Okay, so first of all, so tell people, first of all, what did Peter say um, in his talk? Um, and then what would you say to respond to it? That's yeah, uh, well, Peter just said, uh, you know, I don't agree with the book at any level. <laughs> at any level, at any yeah. Level. So then you like, need to put that on the paperback. Yeah, yeah. it's like, thanks, Peter. Uh, uh, yeah. You're gonna increase our sales because yeah. now people are gonna be very curious about what you don't agree with. Yeah. So, uh, look, uh, Peter Thiel's a brilliant person, uh, a lot of respect for his achievements, but we really have a difference at three levels. Okay. And there are three different dimensions. And the mm -hmm. first dimension is, Peter, how do you define human progress? Okay. You, you, you seem like you have this kind of utopian view of atoms mm -hmm. and energy and medicine. You know, if you have a utopian vision, uh, you can never grow fast enough. Mm -hmm. And uh, you'll also never achieve your objective. Hmm. Uh, so that's the first kind of issue that the, the Jordan so, Peterson makes this yeah. observation. He says, you know, you you should compare yourself to who you were yesterday, not to, to who Absolutely. someone else is today. And it's like, to paraphrase him, it would be, you should compare yourself to who you or your parents, grandparents were, right. uh, not to utopia. That's right. And this is, in, in my book, Money, Greed, and God, I started with this. That, look, if you compare real human societies and economies with Nirvana or the kingdom of God, well, they all look bad, right? It kind of flattens out right. the differences. You compare them to the live alternatives. So we define human progress as how much time mm -hmm. do you have an ordinary person right. in your day to be able to do the things that you would like to do? Mm -hmm. How much time do you have? And uh, so that's the first the first uh, yeah. difference. The second difference is what? how do you measure? Mm -hmm. And um, Peter measures in money and we measure in time. Okay. And um, you know, uh, the problem with money is, or the, the difference between money and time is you can't inflate time and you can't counterfeit it. Mm -hmm. So being able to move from thinking in atoms and uh, money to thinking in, in really thinking in time yeah. and, and knowledge, it's really the difference between our age and the Stone Age is entirely due to this growth in knowledge, as George yeah. Gilder would say. So we have exactly the same amount of time as our distant right. ancestors and our you know, fellow human beings around the world, uh, what we have is a great deal more knowledge. Right, a great yeah. deal more knowledge. And what that's really allowed us to do then is have a lot more choices about what we can do with our time. We have this perfect equality of time every day. Mm -hmm. Everyone gets 24 hours a day. Yes. And you can't buy time. No. If you could, Elon Musk would never die. <laughs> right. You'd right? so have a lot of time. You can't buy time. So the question is, well, what do you get to do with your time over time? And then the third difference, that, uh, I mean, on this the second level, we yeah. measure things with time. And right. we use George's, uh, these three beautiful principles of wealth is knowledge, mm -hmm. uh, growth is learning, and money is time. Money is time. From those three, you can derive this, this theorem that you can measure the growth of knowledge with time. And that's what we, we do is, is we use time prices. Yes. So we buy things with money, but we really pay for them with time. Okay. And so, the, and this is, I mean, this is an absolute measure. This is like the speed of light right. in relativity, right? It's, 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 got it's like five absolute. benefits. Yeah. Of, you know, you're just better off to measure things with time than money. Mm -hmm. You know, the counterfeiting inflation, yeah. that's one of them, but it also features these other things. You can go to any place at any time, at any currency, and, and figure out what the time price of something mm -hmm. is. And the time price is simply the money price right. divided by your hourly income. So money prices are expressed in dollars and cents. Time prices are expressed in hours and minutes. So okay. how much time, and, and so it comes down to this fundamental question. How much time did it take you to earn the money today to mm -hmm. buy this thing? Yeah. And then, and then how much time did it take you yesterday you know, or last year to do the same thing. Is your time price decreasing over time? Mm. If that's the case, 
then your life is becoming more and more abundant. At least with respect to economic things. Yeah, yeah with, with yeah. respect to your time. And, and it's, it's, it's true with products. Mm -hmm. It's true with all kinds of things that you do with your time. Are you really getting to do the things that you would like to do with your time in your life for the next 24 hours like okay. all the rest of us? Yes. Okay, and so have you given us two of the three uh, yeah, divergence? So, so what's the third one? The third one is perspective. Hmm. You know, his perspective is kind of what... What do we could do the next quarter? Yeah. You know, what's right. the next 90 days going to be for for us? And our perspective is what's happened over the last 200 years. Mm -hmm. And what's happened in particular, because you're focusing in many cases on commodities that everyone needs, what's happened for people that are sort of at the bottom? So we started with commodities. <laughs> yeah, but we, we you've gone way beyond that in the book. But the commodities yeah. are really important yes. because commodities are really uh, things that, that the bottom Yes. Really spends their time because they've got to Absolutely. spend their time to earn the money to buy their food. Yeah. So what's happened there is those prices since 1960 mm -hmm. have fallen about 90%. That's crazy. So you take somebody, for example, in India, it, they spend eight hours a day in 1960 yeah. earning the money to buy their food. Well, if that time price has fallen by 90%, mm -hmm. now it takes them less than an hour. And, and what it really says is now they have seven hours in a day that they can now devote to something else. That's great. To learning, to leisure, to service, to working. Mm -hmm. They just have that time now that yes. they didn't have in 1960. So we consider that to be a huge increase in their time Absolutely. abundance. It's really their time abundance okay. that's increasing. Yeah, and so, yeah, so if you're spending uh, yeah, only an hour a day for all the food that you need compared right. to your ancestors who are spending 17 hours a day, that's an amazing kind of progress. Uh, and so is Peter, um, because of course he also tends to focus, um, I, I mean, part of it is, well, where are the flying cars? What we got was TikTok. And of course, there are these, yeah. uh, any kind of technology is going to lead to bad things. The TikTok is it's terrible, right? You know, but it, yeah. but but there's also an amazing amount of uh, conveniences and things, and I don't even know how to quantify the things right. that smartphones, for instance, allow us to do. You know, I always ask my students, "What would you rather have? Would you rather have a, a flying car or an iPhone?" Yeah, and, I'd like a flying car for about a day, and yeah. then I'd be missing the iPhone. I think. And they say, "You want to give yeah. up everything that the iPhone gives yeah. you, and yeah. the internet, and all of this, to be able to fly around in a little car?" Yeah. You know, for an hour, or maybe a day, <laughs> I, you know. So I, I, I look at that comparison. It says really, we made a choice, and that choice I think has been much better yeah. for, for us as a, as a civilization to have this information technology mm -hmm. and access and mobility that 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 gives us. Well, and so the the other thing that I noticed is I think Peter. Um, and sometimes he's quite intentionally being the devil's advocate, I think. I think he does this, too, um, is he says, OK, well, they had these commodity prices and things. They went down in the 20th century. Um, but there's no reason to think that that's going to continue, whereas I think you, you and Marion are, are optimistic that this is a trend that yeah. actually uncovers some fundamental truth. Yeah, what, what we found is, you know, we started with 50 commodities, went back to 1980, and we said, wow, this is about 70% drop in these mm -hmm. time prices on the average of these 50 commodities. And so we said, well, let's go back to 1960. 1960, we see about a 90% drop. Let's go back to 1900. Let's go back as far as we can find data. For. Okay. So we go clear back to 1850. And we okay. We had we had I think we had 26 commodities we were able to look at mm -hmm. from 1850, and it's like all of these things, you know, a 90 percent drop, yeah, two percent drop from from all of these basic commodities. And once again, if those are dropping mm -hmm. for people, it means that they have more time. Yes. And you know, our conclusion is. Things used to be really expensive. Yeah, they did. You had very yeah. few choices, and stuff was really expensive. Yeah. And the inequality, when we think about inequality, yes. it's like, well, I'm comparing myself to the guy down the street. It's like, why don't you compare yourself to your parents or grandparents, and you realize that's where the inequality it is. is. And yeah. I think of those people, they earn less, mm -hmm. and they sacrifice more so we could have more and yeah. earn more. Yeah, that's right. It's like, that doesn't seem fair. That does, yeah, that's no. right. I know, but it's the reality is, yeah. I think, honestly, everyone needs to read Superabundance if, for no other reason, uh, because we tend not to be grateful. We tend not to cultivate an attitude of gratitude. And it's easy to notice the bad stuff that's happening in the present. And you sort of, you need a historical perspective, I think, to be able to realize where we've come and, and a way to understand the comparison. Yeah. And that's what I think Superabundance does. Yeah, you're exactly right. I, I think that, you know, what I found is that I'm doing the research and, yeah. and, and like all these things that I'm looking at, it's just like, I would, there would be nights that I would just have this overwhelming 
profound gratitude mm. for how abundant yeah. this planet is today and how much uh, we enjoy. And at the same time, we have population that's doing this. Yes. That's the other key thing. It isn't just that we've all gotten rich. It's we all got rich, and there's a lot well, way more of us. There's yeah. way more of us than we got rich. So how do you reconcile those two if you are thinking in atoms? Yeah. That we have a finite number of atoms. Right. Here's the pie. We keep adding people to the planet. All the slices are getting smaller, and mm -hmm. we're all going to starve. Well, the issue is economics is not about atoms. Right. Economics is about knowledge, and we make these atoms it's interesting because when you add knowledge to atoms, that's when they become abundant and mm -hmm. valuable at the yes. same time. So you get a lot more of them, and they're a lot more valuable because Absolutely. this knowledge is not subject to the laws of physics. Yeah. And George's idea that wealth is knowledge, well, it's knowledge that we should be thinking about. Mm -hmm. That's really the measurement that how do, we, how do we give people the time and the resources to get on learning curves that allow them to discover knowledge and then share it, yep. and then we all consume it. And it has this other feature that when I share knowledge with you mm -hmm. and you consume it, knowledge doesn't... No, it yes. doubles. it's non-rival. Right. Yeah, I, I didn't need it up. Now you know it, you, you Absolutely. tell me something. Now our knowledge is doubling. Yeah. So we get this effect where we treat one another as collaborators absolutely. in the search for knowledge versus competitors over atoms. Yes, absolutely. So I think that's another thing that that kind of an insight that we found that, wow, look at this, what's Absolutely. happening. Yeah. So people with a freedom to innovate is kind of this key that allowed us to do this. Now, we make no guarantee or no yeah. claim that this is gonna happen into the future. Mm -hmm. We simply say, look what we've accomplished over Absolutely. the last 200 years. Yeah. Because we had these institutions of That's right. freedom and rule of law, and people begin to have respect for one another and tolerate one yeah. another's differences. But it really said, Look, if you, if you give me the freedom to go experiment and I give you the freedom, we can both make each other rich. Exactly. Yeah. Well, that's a very good note yeah. on which to end this. Okay. Yeah, it's good to see you. <laughs> good to see you, Jay. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Jay Richards with the Discovery Institute, and we are at COSM 2022.